Hi, I'm Maddie. Hi, I'm David, and welcome to episode two of BTV. Our first story may be a little intense for some people. If you didn't know, student Bucky Easley took his life here at Southeast last year. We wanted to bring attention to the seriousness of suicide and mental illness. We spoke with Bucky's mom, who shared her story with us in the hope that other people who may be depressed or suicidal will get the help they need. It makes me feel really happy because, like, I'm not, I'm inside all day, so doing something else is very nice. Bucky could make you smile when you were sad, make you laugh at the silliest stuff, <laughs> and make you think about super, super deep stuff. Bucky, birth name Faden Easley, was a transgender freshman student here at Southeast. I go back and forth, and we are unfortunately forever stuck at this point in Bucky's journey. Sometimes she's Vaden and sometimes he's Bucky. Last year on May 10th, Bucky took his life here at Southeast. Vaden was hospitalized in February of this year for suicide prevention. We, we didn't even understand in February how close we really were to losing Vaden. That I doubted myself in February when I took her. I thought I, I was walking my kid up and we almost lost her then. Mental health issues are very common today in schools and the world around us. Southeast has support and resources for students who might be feeling this way. Here at Southeast, you have a very large support staff that can, is including school counselors, school psychologists, school social workers, uh, nurse even teachers, SRO, uh, coaches. If a student has an immediate emergency, they can ask their teacher for a pass right then and there and come straight to the office. If you think a student is feeling depressed or suicidal, there are some warning signs to watch for. When you notice a significant change in behavior or a statement that somebody has said, kind of those warning signs, maybe extreme mood swings or uh, a change in sleeping or eating habits that you're aware of. She was withdrawing from us at home. She was withdrawing from friends that she was previously close to. She withdrew from her art. She withdrew from drawing. She withdrew from her schoolwork and then withdrew completely from life. However, students might not want to get help because of the negative stigma associated with mental health. But peers can still bring light to the topic. If you found out one of your best friends had cancer tomorrow, you would raise funds, you would uh, gather around, you would support this person above and beyond. It's not the same with mental health. It's, oh, she has depression. We're not going to talk about it. That's the part that we need to get past. It's not something to just hide under the rug. Um, and we need to continue to express the importance of, okay, I've got a situation, I've got a problem, I need to get help. While some students do get help, it might not always be enough for the student to pull through. We listened to her in February. Um, when she made the suicidal statements, we took her serious. We listened and we got her help. We went through each step of the hospitalization with her, with the follow-up. You know, we, we thought we were on it. Although it is difficult for her to talk about, Mrs. Easley hopes others can learn from her family story and support their peers. If I could go back and tell myself something, I would tell myself that all that matters is that Bucky is here. And if you are that person who knows someone struggling, whether it's with school, emotions, mental illness, grief, or just life in general, talk to them, be uplifting, because we do not know what tomorrow brings. Wow, Maddie, that was uh, pretty intense and emotional. How was that like reporting for that? Um, thank you. It was, the interview itself was really, really hard just because that environment and, you know, the tone, it was really, really sad. And um, I cried as well as Mrs. Easley, and it was a great story, but in the end, it's not just a story, it's an actual real-life situation, and it's very devastating. Some resources available to help with depression and suicide are the Calm Care Community Crisis Center, the Kansas Suicide Prevention Resource Center, and the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255. Again, that's 1-800-273-8255. LGBT students are at a higher risk of bullying and suicide. 
To help combat this issue, the school board is discussing more protective language in their non-discrimination policy. Reporter Savannah Jarman gives us an update on the policy change. As of right now, many students, parents, and teachers are trying to push for a policy change that specifically protects the LGBT students in USD 259 district. Currently, it doesn't give a specified safe place for the LGBT community. The policy in place says you are not allowed to be discriminated against on the basis of race, color, ancestry, national origin, religion, sex, disability, age, veteran status, or any other legal protection classification. Some in the LGBT community are concerned due to lack of inclusive language. And as long as you don't specify it, people aren't going to follow it. I'm trying to put myself out there, put my stories out there, put other people's stories out there because if the school board and people on the school board are able to put a face to the reasons why we should incorporate this language and these policies, then they'll be able to see it as more of a thing that's affecting humans rather than just statistics. Along with many students, many teachers who are allies to the cause have stepped in to advocate for the LGBT students. It's going to help students feel more at home and more accepted in the environment. It's been a long process, with many people in the community voicing their opinion. But according to Board President Shura Logan, the board is almost ready to make their decision. We want students to feel safe at school, and whatever we need to do to do that, that's what we want to do. Still some steps to be done, but it should be done before the first of the year. Though the policy hasn't changed yet, what you can do in the meantime is be a supportive classmate. For BTV, I'm Savannah Jarman. Thanks, Savannah. The, it's encouraging to see the school board work with students to improve their experience at school. The school board also provided another opportunity for the community to discuss school-related issues. Yes, we are meeting with our community here in the southeast area to be able to listen to what kind of concerns they might have about the strategic plan and what we're doing right. We, we're, our plan is now in its second year. We want to make sure the community is involved and engaged. And if there are concerns, we want to know about them. And if they feel like things are going well, we want to know about that. We had student speakers to get some questions answered and try to understand the Board of Education perspective. I came tonight to get the point across from a student perspective and my goal actually got accomplished to answer some questions that needed to be answered. At this listening session, we also had some parents and teachers come out and speak on the situations they had with their students or kids. The strategic plan is what guides our district for the next five years. Uh, there are four goals. The first one is increasing graduation rate. The second one is uh, having all third graders read by the end of third grade. The third one is increasing career in tech ed along with college prep. And the fourth one is safety in our buildings and make sure that not only our buildings are safe, but our students feel safe in our buildings. One of the things that the parents were really focused on was the graduation rate, which is one of the things that the Board of Education wanted to increase on, as well as the safety of our students. Another thing that the board would like for more students and parents is to attend these meetings so that the board can receive more feedback and they can improve on the situations. The best outcome is if we have lots of people giving us feedback. Tanasia thinks that they are doing their best to change things, but the board cannot change things without your guys' feedback. So make sure to come to the next Board of Education meeting. The school district is really working hard to make an impact on all of its students. For BTV, I'm Sam Greer. It's good to see the district taking an interest in people's concerns. Up next, photographer Huang and I went to talk with the nurse and video game sponsor who provided some details on the risks that come with playing video games. Um, I think there's a lot of positive aspects to video games now because it's becoming more social and it's more of like an interaction between um, students and other gamers online. So I think it can help give them a break from the mundane day to get to do something that they enjoy instead of just always being in school mode. Um, and I do think that video games do have some um, educational benefits as well. When you can learn about like velocity and about acceleration, about physics, about angles, all of those things that the really in-depth players do understand. So I think there are definitely some educational benefits, but then also having that break throughout the day. Video games provide a variety of benefits such as stress relief after a long day or even just a fun time with friends and family. But what are the negative effects of a video gaming and how can we balance it to avoid making bad habits? Some of the video games are a little bit more interactive um, with like the dance videos, things like that, can give a little bit of activity. Um, but again, they have to be in a certain time frame to be healthy. Really, we should limit our TV time or screen time. That includes tablets, phones, television, gaming. Um, 
to under probably a couple hours a day. And really, in the grand scheme of things, kids right now are spending five, six plus hours on screen time, which then in turn becomes unhealthy. While some say that video games can lead to violence, there aren't many scientific studies that prove that statement. Video, I don't really think video games can lead to violence per se, but video games can actually be a reliever of violence because there's some place where you can express violence without actually having an effect on anyone. Yeah, that becomes a, a little trickiness um, being that violence, language, um, different types of activity, can it possibly play into our thought process? Absolutely. Um, healthier gaming, if you do like to play games, would be those old school games, the Tetris games, or games that it, uh, having to figure out different things using our mind instead of the shooting the guns and being violent with language and all that type of activity. People should take more caution when playing video games and watch their playing time. I guess I'll be more careful when getting that Victory Royale. Up next, we take a look at Market Day, hosted by youth entrepreneurs of Southeast. Southeast held their annual Market Day with Ms. Mo's YE class, providing food to the students in the mezzanine. Food included chicken wings, tacos, boba, nachos, and more. Market Day is only occurs two days per semester. I promise I'll get you another piece of pie. I really do. <laughs> A few weeks ago, we had the opportunity to introduce some 8th graders to the fine arts programs at Southeast. The cast of Beehive, the band, orchestra, choirs, debate, and forensics all got to show off a little of what they do to inspire their future freshmen. The band and orchestra programs recently had their first concert of the school year. The orchestra director, Amanda Jimson, and the concert orchestra performed, as well as the sym symphonic orchestra who performed pieces, Russian fantasy, the fall section of the Four Seasons and the Combined Jazz Band also performed that night, led by the band director Crystal Cutler. They performed seven songs including the Star Spangled Banner and Military Escort to raise awareness of their preparations along the rest of the band program for their upcoming trip to France set for June of 2020. Jim Ward, a Democratic member of the Kansas House of Representatives, recently visited Mrs. Howard's government class. He discussed the role of a legislator running for office and the importance of voting. In addition, he also talked about the impact of voting on different age groups, how young people tend to not vote, which results in older people making all the decisions. Jim Ward encourages all students to vote if eligible. First of all, I hope they vote. They register and vote because it's so important, like I told them. It changes the things we talk about if they vote. Um, second, maybe a few of them say, hey, I would like to do that. I would like to be an elected representative. I want to run for office. That helps too. Younger faces running for office changes the conversation, and that's better for the whole community. Are you future ready? Recently, the Futures Fair was held at Coke Arena. The goal of the Futures Fair is to make post-secondary educational options available to all students. These options include colleges, universities, community colleges, military academies, preparatory schools, and technical colleges. Those in attendance had a chance at a $500 scholarship just for showing up. Next, we'll look at the Southeast Fall Sports as they wrap up the season and gearing up for the winter sports. Connor Enlow has more details. Hey Buffs, welcome back to BTV Sports. I'm your host, Connor Enlow. Uh, the football team season comes to an end with the most wins in about a decade. Football had a much better year with a new coach counts coming in and getting the football team more involved with the school. Good season, guys. Soccer ends their season with a great record of 11 wins, 4 ties, and 3 losses. The boys won their first round of regionals, but they tried their best against Dodge City in the second round of regionals, unfortunately lost 2-0. Congrats boys and great job seniors on an amazing last high school season. As winter sports starts, basketball is dribbling in and getting ready to practice and start for their season. Here's Evan with more. Southeast basketball. It's a great program with another season just around the corner. With returning head coach Joe Mitchell and his impressive rookie head coach season, the team is definitely looking to improve for this year. Um, definitely want to improve. Expectations are kind of the same every year. I just hope our kids play hard, get all they have, and, you know, chips fall where they lay. If, I, if my kids go out there every day and give them great effort and playing hard, then I have nothing to cry about. Um, Basketball-wise, um, I think we should be pretty good. Um, probably every coach, you know, comes into a season thinking that. You may have seen star point guard Jackie Johnson on crutches at the beginning of this year. Should fans be worried? Nah, not at all. Oh yeah, Jack would be fine. Um, the injury wasn't nothing major. It's a minor knee scope, so nothing. I, I'm not worried about Jackie or his knee. 
But remember, basketball is a team game and there are always other players to look out for. Uh, Michael J. Hughes is a senior that's coming back. Uh, I look for a big uh, year from Voshan Webb. Um, I would say strongest point of my team is the chemistry. The way my boys get along off the court and on the court. I feel it's the, the best part about the, the game and about my team. After how far the team went last year, the team is definitely looking to go all the way. We feel like this year we can, you know, win state. We have a real chance. So we had a real chance last year, but you know that's over with. So. But remember, nothing is for certain other than another entertaining year of Southeast basketball. For BTV, I'm Evan Tong. We would like to give a big shout out to Jake Bouchamp for his amazing running this year, and stay tuned for our next episode. Thanks for watching BTV Sports. Thanks a lot, Connor. That does it for this episode of BTV. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time, and we'll leave you now with some sights and sound from the fall homecoming.